Viewer discretion is advised. It's the everything and everything show. Everything and everything. Not one, not two, not three, but everything. Everything, everything. What's up with you guys? It's your host, Ty. That's a T and a Y. And how are you guys doing today? Hope you guys had a good day today. Hope you guys had a good day yesterday. And I hope you guys have a good day tomorrow. We are back for episode two. If you weren't here for episode one, please go back and watch that. We started off good. Let's continue doing what we've been doing. Now, before I start off, let me just tell you guys, I'm getting everything set up social media wise. I'm getting the Instagram set up, the Twitter, and there's this new app out there. It's called Periscope. And what it pretty much is, is if you know Twitch for gamers, this is the equivalent of that, but it's for people. So you're broadcasting yourself live. So if I was just walking or whatever, if I was going somewhere, I could broadcast myself going there. You will be seeing me. It's made by Twitter to pretty much kill off FaceTime. So check that out. It's really dope. People will watch you do anything. Like you could be on the toilet taking a shit or something and someone will watch you because people like being creepy like that, I guess. Don't ask me, but I like it. I got it. Make sure you guys get it. Make sure you follow me on that. Everything for my social media will be Ty, the underscore host. I'm getting that set up. Don't worry. That will be set up soon. Now, let's start off today with, we had a few topics to talk about, but today I want to talk about the one topic that's really been on my mind. I'm going to get this out the way so I won't have to talk about it ever again. I'm going to talk about Slim Jesus. Now, if you've been living under a rock the past maybe month or two, you probably don't know who this is or who I'm even talking about, but that's fine. I got you guys. Slim Jesus is a white rapper. I, I'm doing quotation fingers because I, I don't like saying, you know, white or black. We're going to say Caucasian. He's a Caucasian rapper out of... Hamilton, Ohio. He was born in 1997. So he's a little one right there. He might be 17 or just turning 18. If my math is correct. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he had a song that came out in August called Drill Time. Now, if you haven't heard this song, once again, don't worry. I got you guys. I'm going to play this song, just a little bit of it, just so y'all can hear the song. And now I'm going to explain to you what the big problem is behind this song. So I'm going to play it right now for you guys. This man said a oh, boom, boom, boom. Now, when I first watched this, I wasn't listening to the song at all. I was watching the video and how stupid it was. But this motherfucker said a oh, boom, boom, boom. That's how you start off a trap song, my G. Bruh. Oh, let me let me play the rest of it. With savages, you a fuck boy, you can't hang. Nah. You can find me posted up on Frank Block with my fucking gang. gang. You ain't really bout shit, stay out my spot, don't speak my name, or I pull up on your block at night wearing all black and let that 40 bang. I fucked your girl and I ain't even try you. That little hoe, she a fucking thot. Got her off the molly, now she rolling. All she good for is giving top. I got loud pack, I got school buses. Hurry up, fam, come and shop. I got a big 40 with a 30 clip, and I call that bitch my fucking mop. I paid 350 for a Fendi belt and that double. Now, after I heard that, I was like, okay, you know, maybe he really lives that life. You can't judge a book by its cover. Maybe he really out here catching bodies. Like, maybe my dude really out here in Ohio just, you know, catching bodies, killing niggas, bang, 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 left and right. I don't know. I don't know the dude. He might really be about that life. So, you know, I, I ain't pay nothing to it, man. You got to you gotta get it how you can get it. If you want to be a rapper and that's how you're doing it, by any means, fam, go do that. But then 
I, I see an interview. I'm just like, oh, my man getting interviews now. This white boy really about to make it. So I said, let me watch this interview and see what what type of history he got. He probably grew up in the hood. He was around all niggas. And then he just, you know, anamorphed into a nigga, beast or some shit like that. I don't know. But after watching this interview, I was like, wow. Now, let me tell you why I said wow. Because once again, I got y'all. I'm going to show you what this motherfucker said and why I'm about to get into the point. I'm about to put across right now. This is what he said. You know, when you listen to your music, there's a lot of street stories. Like, how how involved were you street-wise in terms of... Street-wise, like, I mean, for the most part on the street shit, like, I got homies that are in that shit, and I know people who are, and people around me. I mean, I haven't, like, I'm not out here catching bodies and shit, obviously. Like, I'm fucking smart, but, like... I mean, I know people, and I've been, you know, in some situations, but I'm not, like, out here fucking killing people. Do you have a criminal record at all? Nah, nah, I'm straight. <laughs> yo, like, really, yo, like, yo, like. Really, nigga? So the problem with this is that I feel as if you're mocking the culture, not necessarily the hip-hop culture as a whole, but trap music. Is part of the hip hop culture, and people who do trap music are really about that life. That's the only thing they can rap about because that's the only stuff that they've been through. You know, guns, drugs, all that type of stuff. So if I was a person that did trap music, and I see you, and you're not about that life, I see as if you're mocking us. You're seen as a way to get a buzz, a quick buzz, because trap music is what's in right now. So I see you as like. A white boy who was like, all right, I love trap music. So why can I go out and make it? I ain't got to be about that life. I could just make up a, a ego, Arts ego or something like that. Therefore, brought up Slim Jesus. Now, he's out here rapping about guns and all that. And yeah, he said he got homies who were evolved in the street life. But you're not. And you say you're in situations that involve the street life. Okay, and anybody could be involved in a situation that they're not supposed to be in. You don't have any rights to go out there and do that. If you're smart, man, go pick up a book. Go study for a, a test. Go do good in school and go get a degree and do some really good stuff. Don't come out here rapping about guns. Y'all up all here here with the true religions and all this stuff with fake guns. And what made it worse is in the video. They put that the guns were fake. Like, no shit, Sherlock. It just wasn't a good look. I didn't appreciate it. And after seeing that, I was like, really, man? That's what you're doing? That's not cool, man. But, I mean, I can't knock anybody's hustle. So, if that's what he want to do, go out and do it. He might he might fuck around and get a record deal. Because it's so easy to get a record deal nowadays. He might fuck around and get a record deal. He might, he might be on MMG. He might join Rick Ross or somebody. I, I don't know, man. But... I had to talk about that. I do not want to talk about that anymore. But today, we start a new segment. And this is the new segment. Play my intro. Boy, do we have some news that are going to start off with something small, then pick it up to something a little bit more serious. So, small thing we have is that a man bought Google for 12 bucks. His name was Sammy Vett, the ex-Google co-worker, flagged the flaw to the search giant security team, and they rewarded him with an as-yet-undisclosed sum of money, a.k.a. they gave that boy some bread. When they found out Vett was going to give the bounty to charity, Google doubled the amount. Now, this is what Vett had to say about the whole thing. He said, I wrote back and told them it was never about money, and asked that the money be donated to charity to the Art of Living India Foundation. They have replied and have stated that they understand and respect the fact that this was not about getting a reward. Despite that, given what they found and how this was handled, they are excited to offer me a reward. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I think that's really cool. That's 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 really cool. I must respect for him giving that to a, a charity of his choice. And I don't think he had the attentions to try to get one over Google. I don't think he got fired and was like, you know what? Fuck Google. I hate my fucking balls. I'm gonna go over here, hack Google, buy it, and ah, take over the world. Ah, I don't think I don't think it was you know something like that. 
So much respect for him to doing that. And round, round of applause for that. We're going to give him a round of applause for that. That deserves a round of applause. That was really good. Now, the next story I'm going to get into. I have a lot to say about this one right here. This one right here. So, if you haven't heard about this. A woman sued her 12-year-old nephew. Now, the name on this woman is Jennifer Connell. And the nephew name is Sheen Tarala. I don't know. Motherfuckers have the weirdest names. Or maybe I just can't pronounce shit. But at the time, he was what? Four years ago. He was eight. It was his birthday party. Aunt's birthday party. He was so happy to see his aunt. Oh my God. I missed you so much. He ran and hugged her so tight. And she broke her wrist. Now you might say, well, damn, how strong is a little boy? Would you have sued for $127 million? Would you have done it? But, I mean, that's not the reason why she sued. The reason why she sued is because the parents offered her $1 towards the medical bill. <laughs> now, I mean, they probably did that to be funny. But I don't think you should be suing no 12-year-old or you're really suing the parents. But I don't think you should be suing them for $127 million. I mean, maybe you're just fragile because he's only eight years old at the time. And you're way bigger than him. But what makes it even worse is that they were on NBC Today talking about how we love each other. Everyone has it all mis mixed up. They don't know what they're talking about. We're so happy. I love my aunt. I love you too, nephew. They're doing that bullshit, okay? I'm not about to fall for it. And the stuff she was saying was even worse. She was saying how she can't even uh hold her up or her fancy food and all that types of bullshit. I don't, I don't even know. up derbs, up derbs, up derbs, up derbs. I don't know what, the, what I'm talking about. Whatever. Her appetizer. She couldn't hold her fancy food in her hand. So now she's having a problem. Oh, my God. I'm so helpless. Well, bitch, you should have got life alert. This this whole thing is stupid. She should she should feel a goddamn shame of herself. And of course, of course, she got rejected for the lawsuit. No one is going to listen to this. No jury is going to go listen to you about this. This is stupid. This is stupid. But what this might be, and I was talking about this with some people. I was talking about this with my sister. This might be a fraud. They might all be into it. I don't know, but it's going to cost... Them way the parents way more to even fight the case. You gotta spend what, ten to fifteen? How much do you have to spend for a lawyer? I don't know. All together might be like what, ten grand, fifteen grand? I mean, that's a lot of money. You're gonna need a big lawyer. I don't think that was worth it. This whole thing is stupid. I don't know what they're gonna do to get over it. But this, this right here, we gotta do better as people because this don't make no sense to be so. Excuse me, to be suing no no little kids like that. You, we got to do better than that. I'm sorry. That that right there. She too old to be doing no dumb shit like that. If it was some teenagers or whatever and it was back and forth like that, I could be like, you know what? Okay. I, I could see that. But for her to be that old and that grown to sue her nephew like that from something that happened four years ago. She, she, I don't know, man. She bugging. She bugging. The parents bugging for even listening to this foolishness. And now they all on TV. So I'm guessing it was a stunt. Because people people do anything to get on TV and get a little fame. So I don't know. I'm going to see how this folds out in the next coming weeks. I am going to be following the story because I do want to know what happens. Hopefully she don't get no money. Hopefully this shit just dies off. That's what I'm hoping for. The next thing I want to talk about is I'm trying to not laugh. Trying not to laugh, but last night, if you didn't see my New England Patriots and Tom Brady, a.k.a. Living Jesus, if you didn't see him play the bum-ass fucking Colts last night, you missed the worst play worst. in NFL history. What I witnessed last night was something I've never seen in my whole entire life since I've been watching sports. 
and I'm 20. I've been watching sports since I was about, I don't know, eight. I've never, I've never even seen this in a video game. I've never seen this at all. This is some shit you will see in a cartoon. They did an audible. I don't know if they were, I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't know what it was. I can't even try to explain to you what it was. It was supposed to be like a offside kick or trick. It was a trick play, but they tricked the damn selves because right. What made it worse is right after they did that, the Patriots came down and scored. And at that point, the Colts were only down six. So think about that. Think about that. Now, what the Colts, I'm not even going to say his name. He doesn't deserve for me to say his name because he should be fired. But what the Colts coach said, th this is what he said. He said the whole idea there was on fourth and three or less, we shift to an alignment to where we can catch them misaligned. They tried to sub some people in, catch them with more men on the field, 12 men on the field. And if you get a certain look, you have three or two yards to make the play. We shifted over and I didn't do a good enough job coaching it during the week. Alignment wise, we weren't lined up correctly and we had a communication breakdown between the quarterback and snapper. That's on me. You're damn right that's on you. That was one of the worst plays. Worst. And the fact you tried it on one of the greatest coaches in sports history, Bill Belichick? Are you crazy? Are you bugging? Were you on something during that? Did you just not care? Are you trying to get fired? Let me know. Let us know. Because that was unacceptable. You're a coach in the NFL. Not the CFL. Not arena football. None of that other bullshit. You're in the NFL. You're calling plays like this? You're calling college plays? I mean, maybe if you tried it against a team like the Redskins or, or Titans... Maybe that would have worked, but you tried it against the Patriots, the Super Bowl champs who are undefeated this year. That's what you do. You were only down six. Honestly, honestly, and I'm, I'm not being biased. I'm not being biased. I'm a Patriots fan. Die hard. I'm going to ride and die for my team. Fuck whoever you like. But the Colts were playing good. I honestly thought. We could have lost that game. If it wasn't for that, we might have lost that game. They were playing really good. They were playing some good football. And they needed to win that because they were the ones who started to hold the flake gate shit. So they needed to win that. You need to win that. And you come out and do this? You cost your team the game. If he's not fired, I don't know what's going on anymore. Maybe I need to go and be an NFL coach because that right there. That doesn't make any sense, my man. You you got to do better than that. You have to do a lot better than that. Is that right there? I've never seen that. And when you when the announcers are laughing, you know it's bad because they got to be professional. And they're laughing? If they're laughing, I'm laughing. Everyone's laughing. And then they were home. So imagine being at that game, right? You're at that game. You know, like, come on, come on, Colts, fuck up, cheating ass Tom Brady and the Patriots. Uh, fuck them, da -da 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 -da. yeah. And you're playing good football. And then you get to that possession, and you know, you're probably in the crowd like, what What are they doing? Why is there only two people in the middle of the field? Is he supposed to get by those two? What's What's going on? Why, why is everybody off to the to the left side? What's going on here? And then they snap the ball and obviously get sacked. Obviously. Like, what other results? Was he going to zoom by him or something? No. He wasn't going to do that at all. So, I, I, I don't know. What's the future for this Colts team? Because Andrew Luck is a fucking bum. This team is fucking trash. If you're a Colts fan, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I, I can't. I can't sit here up here and lie. I can't, can't, and I won't, 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 won't. But I'm going to stop talking about that. I'm going to stop talking about that. We're going to take the rest of this time of this show, and 
I just want to let y'all know who I am and why this has started, why I started doing this podcast and a whole bunch of stuff. Now, I'm a tw- I'm 20 years old. I'm an African American male from Connecticut, cold ass Connecticut, where it's either really hot or really cold. Connecticut's not really the greatest of places. I mean, no one really comes down here for a vacation. You never, you know, hear somebody say, "Oh yeah, I'm going on vacation." Oh, where are you going? Connecticut. Like, no, nigga. What's in Connecticut for you besides snow? There's nothing in Connecticut. But Connecticut is not that bad. I mean, it's it's okay, but it's not bad. I started this podcast for the sheer fact, you know, I'm good at talking. I'm I'm a talkative person. I could talk on this shit for an hour if I really wanted to. Two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours. You know, it goes on and on and on. I can talk. But, you know, there's always stuff going on. And I feel like no one's really mentioning it or saying what they want to say. I'm going to say what I want to say. You can't censor me. I'm like this in person. I'm going to say what I want to say. And if I say it and I slip up, well, can't go back in time. I done said it. Now what? You know, I'm the type of person that, you know, speaks before they think. That's a bad thing, though. I know. But I started this podcast. I always wanted to do, you know, radio and that sort of thing. I always found that to be really fun. So, you know, I said, you know what? Let me stop playing around. You know, I'm, I'm 20. This is my creative years. Let me go out here and do a podcast and just, you know, make something good. I picked. I was thinking about it for weeks and weeks and weeks. I said, well, what can I call it? What am I going to talk about? What can I talk about? I was going to do just sports. And then I was going to just do personal stuff, like just stuff about my life. But I was like, you know what? Not everyone's going to just want to listen to sports. And that no one really wants to hear about your life all the time. You know, you're not therapist. You don't want to hear my problems. So I was like, well, what can I talk about? What can I do? So I said, why not talk about everything? Which is why it's called everything and everything. Simple yet effective. If I talk about everything, then I can reach out to everyone. I can reach out to males and I can reach out to females because I'm just not talking about one thing. And that's that's always the goal. The goal here is for me to reach out to y'all. Y'all can reach out to me because I have topics I talk about. But when I set up social media and stuff like that, you guys can tweet me or whatever the case may be and tell me what topics y'all want to hear about. If there's a news article out that came out or something happened in the media, send me a link to the article. Let me read it and I'll talk about it because there's a lot of stuff that goes on. I can't keep up with everything. I just take out selected stuff that I think is really good. And some people may not know about like the whole guy buying Google. I know a lot of people don't know about that, which is why I want to speak about it. Something something short and cool. But I thought that was really cool and nice. The woman, her and the nephew, that's a real big story going on. So I was like, let me touch upon that and let people know my thoughts, the wholesome Jesus things. I'll talk about pretty much anything. There's nothing off topic on this show. Nothing at all. And when I mean nothing, I mean I mean nothing. Not race, sexuality, nothing is off limits on this show. I might touch on the whole Bill Cosby thing. I might, I might, I might, I might. I may or may not, but nothing's off topic. You guys just let me know what y'all want to hear. I'll. I even want to do special guests, so I want to do an episode where I talk to kids my age and just talk about how things is being a young adult, and we'll probably do that. We'll talk about voting and stuff like that. I'll have some people on the show. Best believe I'll have some people on the show, and we'll get different perspectives from people. You're going to see a lot on the show. I'm going to try to have a mix of a lot of guys on here and a lot of females. I might just do like a, a group discussion. I might do a group discussion. So if you want to send in questions, do that as well, because we will be I will be doing that in the future. So you can send in any questions you want. I'll let you know a little bit about the guests before they come in and you just send me questions and we'll spread them out. We'll all answer them as a group. There's a lot of stuff. We got a lot of stuff planned for this. I say we because I'm talking in third person, but there will be a we. I probably won't do a co-host thing, but like I said, I will have a lot of special guests and they'll help me with the show. We're also going to do, I'm also going to do a music special because I do love music. So I'll probably get my friend over here and we'll do a whole hour discussion about music and how what's taking place in hip hop. I'm not going to talk about just hip hop. There's some 
you know, rock and roll and other stuff we'll talk about too. But for the most part, we're talking about that. But that's all I have. This was a very short episode. We're around the 25 minute mark. I usually try to hit for 35 minutes to an hour. But we're going to make this one a little bit short. Today is Monday, October 19th, 2015. So like this for even putting this out on a Monday. Because Monday's the worst day in the week. Who the fuck likes Monday? Monday is like the fuck it day. Like you don't want to get up but like fuck it. It's, it's Monday. Monday's like the worst day. Monday's death. Monday is like. When Monday comes around, Monday's like when you found out your dog has to get shot in the backyard because he has rabies and you can't bring him to the vet. That's Monday. Monday is, you know, going outside in the summer with shorts on, but your legs assy as shit. And then the girl you always want to talk to comes up to you and she looks at your legs and your knees and she like, Damn, nigga, what happened to you? Was you doing a long jump and just landed all up in the sand? Not that that happened to me, because I don't happen to me. My legs always lotioned up. You know, I got that Johnson & Johnson's, or I got that, you know, cocoa butter. I'm just giving examples, just so y'all can know how shitty Monday is. That's not me. But, that's what we have to, and I'm going to try to do these. I wanna, I'm not showing the format I want to do. I don't know if I want to do these weekly or daily. If not daily, then two in a week. Because if I do it daily, I might do like a like a daily zap where I'll just talk about one random news thing a day and just, you know, something, something real quick. But definitely these will be once a week for right now. So like this one came out. The last one I did, I believe I put out on a... On a Thursday. So so give or take every couple days. We'll just put it like that. Every couple days. So I had one Thursday. Got off the weekend. I got all my notes together. Came back around Monday. And I'll probably do another one. Thursday or Friday. We'll do something like that. But. This has been. Everything. And everything. And I still don't have outro music. How sad is that? I don't have outro music. And I'm looking for something really good. So if there's like any producers out there that, you know, just want to get their name up or whatever. I mean, right now we're small, but I can help me help you. I need an outro. I got the intro. The intro is fire. I heard that intro. That intro is flames, but I need an outro. I don't know how to close that out. We're building this together as a group. I need an intro. I need something that screams, damn, that was a finale. That right there was the ending. Like, that felt like a series finale. Like, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. But I'm Ty. That's a T and a Y. And I'll see you guys next week.